How does money work? Spiking bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Uh, I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and this video is a little spicy. Uh, what I did was we took our kind of arbitrage money breakdown from the Voton Unbox and Build and Magnetization video, which was about an eight to 10 minute segment in and of itself. And I, I just kept, I kept thinking about it and I kept thinking about it and I was like, you know what, that is perfect for its own video. So we took that and I'm gonna add in a little bit, a little caveat, a little, uh, little uh, up to date kind of news at the, at the start of it right now, just to kind of bring you up to speed on, on the whole situation and kind of talk about why it's actually cheaper to convert your money to Great Britain pounds to purchase Games Workshop product. Now that isn't always the easiest thing to do, um, unfortunately, and it's actually against Games Workshop rules for any other retailers, including themselves, to send stuff outside of the host country. So if you buy, uh, you know, if you buy something on the Great Britain site, you're not going to have it shipped to America, America to Australia, unfortunately, and vice versa, and all that. So it doesn't quite work the way we want it, unfortunately, to where we can save a bunch of money because the savings is actually a big shock. And I'll let you kind of just keep listening to the video to find out exactly what the savings are. But keep in mind what I'm about to show you here when I get to my point in the next segment here shortly. So first up, I think in the video, uh, it is pretty close to the uh, conversion rate right here that you see currently for uh, the US dollar. Now, the pound actually tanked to an all time low on Tuesday, the 27th of one point a dollar seven for uh, the conversion right there, which was previously held for a dollar eight, I believe, way back in 1985, believe it or not. Uh, right here. Well, if I can get it to trigger on that, but somewhere in there it goes down that dollar, one dollar and eight cents, believe it or not. So they hit their recent all-time high, but here you can notice where it's it's definitely been fluctuating a lot. You know, almost fifty percent, or well, not necessarily fifty percent, but like a nickel to to seven cents right here um, in this time period. So it's getting close to par, closer and closer, which is which is really just wild. And another point that I wanted to make uh, as you listen to the video, I, I said something. I'm like, hey, it's actually cheaper to buy the stuff in Great Britain or if you have a buddy to just buy it off the shelf and ship it over here to America because the, the Royal Mail rates are actually cheaper to ship something from the UK to here than it is for us to over there because I buy a lot of stuff from the UK still and when I see how much I pay in the cart and when it gets here and it gets here quick in a lot of cases, it's, it's wild. At that I'm just like, man, I wish our mail was that good. So I, I actually got curious and I looked it up. I'm like, yo, for the Votown box set, which I'm about to show you in, in the, the next segment right here, how much would it actually cost if I sent it Royal Mail from the UK to America? And this is just a, a baseline to mainland US, um, which you know is, is here in the continental states, up to two kilograms, which is about four pounds. So if you take the Votown box and you put it in a Mylar wrapper, you don't put it in a box because it's actually gonna gain, gain a little bit of weight. But if you put it in a Mylar wrapper, and you ship it over here, it starts out at 1425. Now there's some, there are some restrictions as you can see um, to the maximum length and girth and, and stuff, but it actually, I measure the box, it actually fits in this. So 1425, depending if it goes going to the East Coast, it's a little bit more to the West Coast. Uh, in, in pounds, you know, that's that's less than 20 bucks, right? So yes, you will have to pay that at when you purchase the item. Um, so, and it, which can be up to 20% from what I understand. So yeah, it might not be a complete like apples to apples conversion in the following segment, but it just gives you an idea of exactly how much Games Workshop makes off the arbitrage of their their products and different for the convenience of us paying for a currency in our local uh, you know country and such. So just kind of keep that in mind. Yeah, it is actually pretty pretty easy to ship stuff here. And when you start tacking on the cost of that and the cost of the actual shipping of the item, there's still a lot of room for profit, especially if you're a buddy or if you yourself buy it at a discount in the UK and then ship it back to yourself. Um, like I said, it's, it's a long shot to do this as a business enterprise unless you're the manufacturer, but just kind of keep that in mind where, where, the, where the, the GW money is and the real money is here. And then something else I wanted to kind of show you that was interesting was the Games Workshop financials. So this was their financials from last year. So that is the period up until um, 30, oh wait, did I pull up the wrong one here? I might've pulled up the wrong one. 
believe it or not. Oh no, here it is. I did pull up the right one. Yay, I did it. All right, so this is the period just at basically at the start of summer, right? So you can see here their actual revenue, which I guess I could click on this and slide it over slightly so you can read it. So their core revenue was 200, or excuse me, 386 million pounds, right? And that's broken down by a lot of different things, which you can kind of see um, uh, broken out. And it, it contains like their licensing, um, trade sales which is basically business their business to business like game stores or or corporate or um, franchise stores and then also their uh actual like direct sales in their own web cart right and there's different percentages for that and they get into it further in their in the report but i'm not going to dig that up because really we just kind of want like some broad stroke comparisons here just for you to kind of consider as we get to the next segment here so 386.8 million now one thing that is that we know is a constant is that the American market makes up about 50% of their sales. That's pretty much been the same for the last 20 years or so, right? And um, which kind of makes sense because you know we're really huge and we're all about capitalism and all that stuff, right? So you figure, I guess, you know, uh, we'll just we'll just round up. We'll just say 200 million. 200 million pounds of their sales came from America. Now, what I'm about to show you in the next segment is exactly how much their markup is. Now, keep in mind, this isn't all physical products. They don't arbitrage digital products and things like that. Um, this is just physical products. So like their straight web cart, web cart sales, their straight sales to uh, stores, like through trade sales and things like that. So there is a little bit of money coming out of here that wasn't necessarily accounted for from, you know, like their their licensing revenue where, you know, they allow video games to, to use their products or um, things like joy toys or, you know, just stuff like that. So we're just taking a broad stroke comparison here. So just just keep in mind this number, two hundred million dollars, was potentially what the you know, and that is rounded up some. But just think, two hundred million dollars in your mind is what Games Workshop profited, or you know, in their total revenue, not their profit, their total revenue from the U.S. market slash North America, because I think they include Canada, but Canada is a whole nother can of worms. So if you keep that in mind, when I get to the next segment, when we talk about um, exactly how much money they make off of arbitrage, which I'm going to show you, just kind of keep in mind that sales figure, which might be a little high, 200 million pounds, um, how much of that might be semi artificially inflated, even if you even if you back it down a notch to account for licensing and things like that, just just drop it in half, just call it just call it a hundred million dollars, whatever, a hundred million pounds, right? Just, just, just a hundred million pounds. Like these are numbers that are huge percentages of each other. And when you start seeing actually how much money Games Workshop makes just in currency conversion, that isn't really a value to anybody but themselves, then it's, then you kind of start thinking like, holy cow, that's, that's a huge amount of money. Uh, for them to be doing. Now, something else I wanted to show you. So this really isn't going to come into play so much officially with these numbers because in 2021 um or 2022 going back to 2021 right this wasn't necessarily the case so if we go to the five year here and we go back you can see right here that well up until these numbers at the beginning of summer so right about the beginning of summer it was about 1.25 which you can see right here so this report basically covers all of this section here um going all the way back to um, something like right here ish so it was a little is about double on the on the conversion rate but now when we're down here and very getting close to par it really is wild how much money they are truly contributing to their overall sales and thusly some percentage of profit which varies wildly between their web store and their trade sales operations and their licensing that it's just a, it's an absurd number in the you know to the tone of multiple millions if not hundreds of millions of dollars of great britain pounds that's just wild when you start thinking about it how they've built in this ridiculous thing into their overall sales so we're, we're going to talk more about that i'm going to lead into that intro where we're kind of at the tail end of talking about the voton army box and the, the value in games workshop money and then i kind of get into the apples to apples comparison of how much money they're truly making off this arbitrage of conversion rates between us dollar and great Britain pound and as folks commented on the video 
it gets even more wilder when you start comparing the New Zealand dollars, the Australian dollar, even the Canadian dollar. It's it's kind of wild. So just kind of if you're in one of those countries, hey, let us know what the Votan box is in your currency. And then it even starts to sink in even more how much they're making off of those markets uh, as well. So there is value in here. It is worth it. You're going to get stuff early. You're going to get the Codex book early uh, before all the stuff comes out. But, you know, is it worth it to you? Well, I guess that's really just kind of up to whether you want to jump in this faction and get hit the ground running and get a bunch of what seems to be useful units. But I did want to talk about pricing a little bit because I, I started to think about it the other day is uh that the the pound was down and i was like i wonder what the pound to to us dollar is now because games workshop if you're not aware actually arbitrages their currency rates so like if i was to take my money in us dollars and go over to great britain and walk into a store and, and exchange rate my money for something in great britain pounds i would make out a lot better in games workshop product than most other things because games workshop arbitrages the conversion currency rate. And just to give you an idea of how that is, this $200 box set here in the States costs 120 pounds in Great Britain. But that same 120 pounds would cost me in my US dollars $135.82 currently. I think the pound is about $1.12. So what does that mean? I don't understand. I'm not good with numbers. I'm not either. Sometimes I got to really dig into things. Basically, Games Workshop is arbitraging the conversion rate between the UK and here of $64.18. So if I actually purchase this from a UK realer, real, re, re, retailer, which you're not allowed to do, US retailers are not allowed to ship out of the States. Same with the UK, same with the EU, same blah, 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 because Games Workshop knows that this is the case. But the pound has dropped so much. And here you can see the five year, basically the five year, it would be 159 and the profit, the arbitrage profit would only be 40%. But look at this, $64 into 135 is nearly 50% markup. That's mind effing blowing. That is that, that that is the case right now. That you can get 50% more for your money by converting it directly to Great Britain pounds over there in in uh, England, right? Which we're not allowed to do. We are not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that. But if you're an enterprising individual and you're in England, you could buy something off the shelf and you could ship it to your buddies in America just fine because you're not a real retailer and you're not beholden to those rules from Games Workshop. But I digress the, you know, there's a lot of effort and things like that. And you might save your buddy some money, but as an enterprise, maybe it's not quite worth it, I suppose. But either way, this is what we're working with here when we say hobby dollars and when we say Games Workshop money, because Games Workshop money is basically bullshit at this point. So just kind of keep that in mind in the back of your head, you know, when you're trying to hobby a little bit smarter and make you stretch your hobby dollars a little bit farther. Maybe you can pick up some trades, maybe you can get some stuff used, maybe you can, you know, pick it up wherever. But yeah, it's pretty wild right now, well, the comparison between the two. And just to make another interesting comparison, I remember an antidote, not antidote for poison, but an antidote that uh, a previous uh, individual, we'll say an industry insider with Games Workshop told me one time, that the old Battle for McCrag box sets, they had, Games Workshop had them landed in their warehouse in Memphis, Tennessee, here in the States, for $7 a unit. And at the time, they were selling for $50, right? So this is 2005. So let's just take that for a second, extrapolate it out to 2022. So we know they're making the stuff in the UK, they're shipping it over. And the reason I'm making this, uh, this, this little... Uh, story here is because I know there's going to be folks out there that are like, yeah, there's, they're making 50% off conversion, but they have, they have to spend money to get the stuff over here. That money is already taken into account and cost of goods sold to get the stuff here in America. So look at this. So if they landed these battle from a crag box sets, the retail for 50, they cost them seven, $7 landed in the States. And that was a big box full of all sorts of uh, space marine miniatures and Tyranid miniatures. It was it was a great box site. A lot of people might remember it. It was ETB. Let's just multiply that out. Times it four to hit two hundred dollars retail. So you take a fifty dollar retail box, you make it two hundred dollars retail. You take your seven dollar cost, you make it twenty dollars retail. Now let's say in twenty twenty two, this Votown box. Let's just say, let's just call it 
it cost $28 to get here in the States, landed in the warehouse in Memphis, Tennessee, right? So think about that for a minute. That $28 cost generates Games Workshop at full retail $200 in sales. I think their shipping costs are covered, guys. I, calm down. Their shipping costs are covered. You don't have to defend them about some scummy business practices here on their arbitrage conversion rates, right? Just be aware of this. So, and yes, if they sell it to wholesalers, they sell it to, we'll just call it 50%, they're gonna, you know, their $28 only generates them $100, but in, you know, in gross, but either way, you know, I would suspect, judging by their numbers, that their sales to individuals is very close to their sales to retail side. Actually, I think they did better. I think sales, I think trade sales was 29%. Of, um, of their sales overall. And I think their web store was far below that. So actually they, I could see where their costs are gonna be a little bit higher selling to retailers, but you know, that's just the way a vertically integrated company kind of works, I guess, at this point. But even then, $30 to make $100 isn't bad, you know, overall, over over the course of things. But just kind of keep that in mind. They're, they're, they're making money, just like every other company out there. You don't have to defend them doing this sort of stuff here because there's other ways to do this sort of stuff and i'm getting long and i'm getting on a tangent so if you just want to watch the unboxing get to that here you know just forward it there's little title thingies and at the bottom you can you can jump through that on the timeline but the thing i want to say is this isn't necessary to do this is just squeezing blood out of a turnip at this point that they really don't have to do there's ways where you can process our funds here in america you're gonna you're gonna actually make more money doing it that way it's not 50% more money, but there's 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 more money to be had. There's a little bit of arbitrage to be had, just a little bit, just a sliver. Don't get high off your own supply like this. This is just ridiculous at this point. We are basically here in America, 50% of Games Workshop sales propping up. Think about it. We're at 50%. At 50%, we're basically propping up their sales numbers because this it's not looking that good in their other markets. And when we're 50% of their overall wow that's just that's just my that's i mean when you look at their numbers from year to year you can't look at their numbers to year to year at this point because they are that much they're, they're that much different because of this right here like there's so much more money being made that isn't getting talked about here you know in the financials that people are like oh they're still doing great they're still doing great but i mean this is a these are big numbers right here that are equaling out to even bigger numbers that are kind of staying consistent, but are they staying consistent? Would they be a lot lower if this wasn't happening? And I, I tend to think so. So yeah, it's it's pretty wild how much Games Workshop makes off of the, the currency arbitrage in 2022. And it, judging by the headlines today, uh, it's not getting any better for the uh, pound sterling, unfortunately. So, you know, look, I can't see Games Workshop changing anything they're doing because, you know, like I said, there's, you know, tens if not hundreds of million pounds on the table um, for them to change would be potentially disastrous for them as a company but there are other ways that you as a consumer can leverage your real hobby dollars into you know warhammer hobby dollars i guess so to speak or gw money uh by you know buying buying bundle deals buying stuff used going in with friends on you know some of the boxes out there picking up used stuff is probably the easiest way to do it but it's always going to require a little bit extra work and we have a bunch of guides and I'll, I'll try to put them in this video in the comments in the description all the different guides we have to like you know buying new and used warhammer selling your your stuff off to try to get the most money uh, a lot of alternatives out there on the market we have a bunch of articles on that too like some of the really pretty fairly priced stuff out there and you know there's some other boutique resin stuff that isn't fairly priced but it, it looks a lot different and I, you know and sometimes having a squad of that in your army really makes your uh you know the whole collection kind of stand out from everybody else's which you know i can see the value to that too but maybe not doing a whole army like that because that's just that's just silly that you know that's just that's just silly out there apparently i haven't learned <laughs> how unprofessional of me so that is it for this one thank you very much for watching uh, this video, uh, kind of uh, a blast from the uh, few, few weeks ago past there. Uh, but before you leave, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our future videos. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D 
artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just It's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikybits.